Hi, I'm Mo. Hello, I'm Wendy. And we're back today having the sex talk. The sex talk. Ding, ding, ding. sex talk. So, what are we talking about today, Wendy? Well, we thought we would talk about the issue of dating and COVID. That's right, dating and COVID. So, a friend of mine reached out and said, you should talk about this on your sex talk, is, are people dating during COVID? Is masturbation your new best friend? Are you willing to risk, you know, get catching the virus and your safety to go meet someone new? And has loneliness taken a toll of you on you during this time? And what are some things that we can do about it? And if you're wondering about our costumes, it's because <laughs> we're stuck at home and we get a little bored sometimes, so we put on lots of things, makeup, oh, stuff. clothes. We want to feel good. <laughs> That's what we do during COVID. But if you are out there and you're single and you want to know what to do and how to do it, this video is for you. Oh yeah, and actually even if you're with someone but you're polyamorous, yeah. How will you talk to your partner about your needs outside of perhaps your relationship? Yep, I think that's a very, let's start there because I do know that in my practice I have several clients who identify as polyamorous and one thing that they've experienced during this time is a sort of forced monogamy is what a lot of people are experiencing during this time of COVID, um, which kind of supports this idea that they have a primary partner and they live, maybe they live with that primary partner and so they're secondary partners, tertiary partners, partners that they just kind of see casually or date have sort of fallen off. Um, at least that's kind of what was happening in the beginning. but over time because it just kept going right months and months and we're like oh we're still in a pandemic people then started doing this the more you know getting tested like this is kind of we're like in it for the long haul so let's get tested yeah and possibly being desensitized in the way that you are at home and then you just can't take it anymore where's the balance how is your risk assessment? What about instant gratification compared to uh, inhibiting your feelings or responses that you want to act on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so let's talk about risk assessment. What does that look like for people? Well, for, for me, with um, my clients, I can say because I work in ABA, Applied Behavior Analysis, um, a lot of the technicians that go into the home need to do some risk assessment with the family and I need to lead that. So um, basically <clears throat> we need to find out what kind of contacts they've made with other people and what under what circumstances. Um, were people wearing a mask? Are they hand sanitizing? How long are the contacts and how much distance is there? There's a lot that goes into it, I suppose. It's complex, and I think that this could be um, something that you you could it could pertain to like dating as well. When, before mm -hmm. you want to take a date with someone, yeah. Well, and then if you're in a non-monogamous relationship or polyamorous relationship, you have to take the partner that you live with into consideration as well, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's great for you to sanitize and go into those places, but your partner at home is relying to you on you to, you know, like now you're going into someone else's home, you don't know where they've been, and this sort of reminds me of um, getting, 
you know, tested for STIs in the non-monogamous community or just when you're dating because there's this sort of idea like who you sleep with, your partner is also sort of sleeping with, right? Even if they're not actually having physical contact with them. Um, if you're having physical contact with that person, your partner also is too. If you go out and catch an STI, you bring that home, your partner might catch it as well. If you go out and you, you get catch COVID, you bring that home and your partner might catch it as well. So there's a lot of different factors to consider and I can certainly understand why this would just be like, oh, this is too hard. I'm just going to either completely ignore it and go about my business and try to be as safe as possible or completely go the opposite direction. I'm just going to stay home and not do anything at all, which I think a lot of people are doing. Well, I think a lot of people are doing both. Um, or there's down the middle where you can do it safely. There, you can go get your COVID test. If you meet somebody on a dating app and you connect and they like, you like each other, um, you can make a date and go get tested like what is it like the day before and then the day of your results have the date right after you get the results. Yeah, there, there are a lot of, it seems like there are a lot of confounding factors. Some people say you, you can't have a test until five days after you've made contact with someone who may have um, COVID or been exposed to someone with COVID. So I think it's it's really important to stay within the guidelines and understand that because you can have like first degree contact, second, third degree, and you know, it can be very circular. Mm -hmm. So risk assessment will take time, mm -hmm. yeah, but it's probably worth the effort. And patience because once you get tested, if you're not having the date that same day, you probably should quarantine for a few days so that you know that that test, is kind of, that test came back negative and I'm going to quarantine until I go see that other person. Right, yeah, CDC is now saying 10 days. 10 days. 10 days for quarantine after an like exposure, a, yeah. a, a suspected exposure, yeah. which is, is not too long to wait for, yeah. for some. But if you get a negative result, if then you, quarantining until you go see your date, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think I think also it depends on the, the test. You have to be aware of what type of Right, because there's a such thing as a false negative. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of types of different tests. So if you educate yourself and look at what type you're taking, if you're taking the, 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 the quick one the rapid <laughs> the rapid test, then you are it's it, it's, it's not less, it's not a hundred percent yeah, sure. It's less accurate, yeah. Yeah, it's less accurate. So those things need to just be talked about and taken into consideration mm -hmm. and transparency. Transparency is key. I think the communication part is key. And look, I've known people who have taken so many precautions and they still got COVID. Um, super safe people get it. So there's a lot of, I really want to say like, it's okay if you catch COVID. It doesn't like, there's so much shaming going, or, going on out there shaming people who aren't wearing masks, shaming people who get COVID like they did something bad. It's so reminiscent of STIs and HIV and AIDS, this like shaming mentality. And we're all in this together. Um, we all are potentially can contract COVID. I could still catch it at any given time. Um, just because we're having this talk and we try to be as safe as possible does not mean we're we want to shame anyone that's that's caught it or um, blame anyone. Um, and I think that just having a little bit of humility around it and just trying to be as safe as you can um, and, and not putting yourself or others at risk as much as you can. That's really all you can do. Yeah, I think some reactions could be like embarrassment about getting it, mm -hmm. um, like you, you covered. Mm -hmm. but same with shame or, or embarrassment those are those are feelings and if you do risk assess and do your best you know that's what you can do and if you're knuckling it like white knuckling it and 
trying to hold um, back your um, desires, your natural desires, it, <laughs> then that can also be be very hard on your mm -hmm. primary relationship partner if that's what you have mm -hmm. or if you're single mm -hmm. it can be very difficult for being lonely like you mentioned yeah well loneliness I didn't talk about this in this video but we do have another video that I did with Damon um, about loneliness and how loneliness can actually be traumatic and I'll link to that video somewhere um, here but it's true like loneliness is it's traumatic. It's painful. It can almost be even worse on your, on your, um, on your immune system because if your mental health is, is suffering, that directly affects your immune system. And so, here we're being on one hand told to isolate, but if isolation is causing such deterioration of our mental health, like what's worse, going out and putting yourself at risk, or sitting at home and like you know, struggling and suffering your mental health. So in many cases, I know I've heard of doctors saying like, if you're that lonely, like go and get some tests, let's figure out a plan, let's figure out a way for you to get out of the house, get out into the sunlight, go see some people, even if it's at a social distance, um, because that loneliness and isolation is also very, very bad for your health. Sex talk.